In the early 500s, centuries before the religious communities with which we're most familiar today, Saint Benedict and his sister Saint Scholastica were living the monastic way of life. The continuous tradition of communities living under the rule that Benedict crafted for his monastery has endured longer than any other institution in Western civilization. And Benedictine women and men continue the legacy today in monasteries around the world. Today, in North America, there are over 1,000 Benedictine women in over 40 monasteries. They are neither the apostolic sisters most common today, focused primarily on their ministry, nor strictly enclosed contemplatives, but women whose lives blend both their commitment to the liturgical prayer of the church in a stable community and service to the people of God. The values that have formed Benedictine life for more than 1,500 years are still important today. Prayer, a life marked by liturgy, lexio, and mindfulness. Nothing is to be preferred to the work of God. The main work of the day is gathering for the daily liturgy of the hours, the morning, noon, and evening rituals of praise that form the background fabric of whatever else is done during a day. Personal prayer and meditative spiritual reading are also part of the daily schedule. Community, call to serve the common good. May God bring us all together to everlasting life. The other important element of monastic life is that it is a life in common, where all share in the daily life, and thereby model a peaceable world where people of all kinds can be in harmony and reach out to others in love and charity, both within and outside the community. stability, commitment to the daily life of this place, its heritage and tradition. Never departing from these instructions, but faithfully observing them and persevering in the monastery until death. Any meaningful commitment requires that the people involved stay in relationship to one another through all the circumstances of life. A monastery is not just a geographical center where community takes place, but where people preserve a sacred culture that changes with the times, but never strays from its purpose and is a witness to the world by its permanence. Obedience a commitment to listening and consequent action. Obedience is a blessing to be shown by all, not only to the superior, but to one another. The commitment to obedience that monastics take at their profession is not merely a top-down pledge of loyalty. As the word obedience has the same root as the word listening, The monastic woman is to be in constant attentiveness to where the Word of God is present in all of life and the response to which she is being called. Conversatio, the way of formation and transformation. Whether the novice shows eagerness for the work of God, for obedience, and for trials. At profession, the monastic commits to conversatio, a Latin word that is not about a once-only conversion, but a daily conversation. The wording in the monastic profession, fidelity to the monastic way of life, is total. It includes the poverty and chastity of the vows of later orders, 
but within a more holistic faithfulness that includes these and all the other choices of our lives. Discipline, a way toward learning and freedom. What was once done with dread will now be done without effort, as though naturally from habit. Such a life is only possible when one is willing to put in the work, and that leads to transformation. Monastic life is not about harsh asceticisms or self-punishment, but about the everyday discipline that is needed to grow closer to God by making the ordinary sacrifices and structuring the practices that are required for the common good. Humility knowledge of self in relation to everything else. We may call our body and soul the sides of this ladder into which our divine vocation has fitted the various steps of humility and discipline as we ascend. The virtue of humility, a leading characteristic of monastic spirituality, is the result of a discipline that moves one away from self-centeredness to an understanding of one's right relationship to God and the realities of the human condition. As C.S. Lewis once said, it is not thinking less of yourself, it's thinking of yourself less. Love of Christ and neighbor. If you desire true and eternal life, turn away from evil and do good. Let peace be your quest and aim. Self-emptying leaves more room for attention to things outside one's own self-interest. Whether engaged in active ministry to others, sharing the space and peace of the monastery, or praying for the needs of the world, the Gospel's values, peace and justice, an imitation of Christ, lead the monastic woman to respond in serving the needs of her brothers and sisters. Care of creation, responsible use of creation, culture, and the arts. Regard all goods of the monastery as sacred vessels of the altar. Mindfulness of the unity of all things in God extends beyond concern for other humans to concern for all of creation. Benedictines value the arts and crafts that create beauty for the world, and they value their own artisans. They treat all created things with reverence and strive to preserve and protect the natural world. Hospitality openness to the other. Let all who present themselves be welcomed as Christ. The underpinning that makes such generosity possible is the Benedictine hallmark of hospitality. Benedict lived in a time of great movements of people and a lack of stable, safe, and welcoming places. Today, we are no less committed to opening our homes and our hearts to all manner of people in need of recognition, not only to serve them, but to receive from them the word and image of the sacred that they bring to us. Today's world is hungry for these values. In a world of separation, violence, individualism, and division, Benedictine life continues to offer its witness of peace and unity, to proclaim through the life of each sister the words from Scripture that are a beloved Benedictine motto, that in all things God may be glorified.